So in the last tutorial, I walked you through how to set up a simple path animation and a turntable animation and have a transparent background for your GIFs. Uh, so here I am just going to talk a little bit more about different kinds of path animations that you have. I've set up um, different curves, so if I just change the view, you can see what I have here. Um, so I'm just going to go through what these different um, curves can do for you. Uh, select path animation. I'm going to select this curve as my path and this line as my target. Um, currently, I have this setting, render situations, that I've been using to play around and I'll go more into uh, those properties and how we can change them later on. I um, want to make sure it's in the correct viewpoint, so it's going to be this window perspective. Um, and again, PNG to hold transparency. Um, and I'm going to change my file name to uh, make it unique so it doesn't write over anything else. Um, so set that. And now you can see, um, again, I like to toggle my camera on um, so you can see that on all the different views um, as that goes through on that camera path. Um, so here, just click play and we'll see what that looks like. So I've gone in and played with the shadows and some of those effects um, but that's what's happening and I you know maybe I don't really like that so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna change the path of my target here uh, maybe I'm going to you know bring it to the back make it shorter I'm also going to bring one of these points up uh, and let's see what that does So I'm actually going to bring maybe this one a bit more of here, um, but you can keep doing that. You can keep playing with the line path to get what you want, and maybe this one's more in the picture. Um, maybe one of these camera paths need to be brought back um, so that I get more of that in the frame. And so that's how you can just kind of keep adjusting and getting um, what you want in your frame. Uh, here's another example. I'm going to do a path animation as well with this circle. So I'm going to select the circular path and I'm going to select this point here as my target. Uh, they have to be real points, not uh, control points, so that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, I'm going to keep it with this rendered situations uh, capture method, um, but here you can go and if you have different kinds of uh, view modes, uh, you can change that there. Um, you can see these are all of my um, customized settings. So this one's one that I made for this uh, specific one. I have one that's just transparent background, so I don't have to be going into my rendered viewport and changing that. I know that that's there, one for masks, etc. Um, and similar with my wireframes, if I want one with a black background, transparent or white, I have those set up already. So I'll walk you through that later. Um, but render situation is fine, okay, and let's see what that looks like. So that's kind of that circu circle that was there. Um, so I'm actually going to, here you can see that camera going around. So let's play that again, and it'll go around the camera as, um, as or sorry, the camera path as you see up until it reaches that 150 frames. Um, so you can keep playing with that. You can change uh, these points in space. If I want to make it a little, you know, give it a different kind of wiggle, um, I can do that. Oh. I'll take it as a whole and just give it a little rotate as well. Um, but you'll see some of those differences if I press play. It's a completely different um, view. So, just you can keep playing with different shapes and different paths and try to get what you want and you can keep adjusting um, these as you see fit and necessary to get uh, the view that you want. You can also change the lens, lens length, um, and then that might get you, you know, 
a better view of what you're trying to get. So let's escape out of that and let's maybe bring this. Um, yeah. So I'm going to go in here, change my uh, view settings to rendered situations. It's bigger properties. Okay, so here in view, um, that, that'll be at the very bottom, Rhino Options view, you want to expand that. Um, display modes, if you select on display modes, not expand it, you can see all your different display modes. You can go over one of the existing if you want to work off of what's there. So that's what I did for the render situations. I copied it. Um, and then, you know, let's see, I'll just show you what happens there copied everything, made a copy of it there. If I go on display modes, I could see it here. So I'll just delete that because um, I have this one I'll be playing with. Um, and so that's already set up. You can import, export, and have different display modes. Um, so here we'll come down. It's expanded already. This is the one we're going to be playing with. Um, again, my background is set to transparent. I can change the name there. Different ground plane. Uh, stuff information here. If I turn it on, you will see that uh, the shapes will make shadows on a ground plane. It will be transparent um, since it is on shadow only. So if I uncheck the shadow only, you will see that ground plane. But if you want it to have that kind of um, like occlusion effect ambient, um, you can click that on. So I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna check that off there. Um, but that's just, you know, this one will give you crisper edges um, against that background. And um, so here are all those settings. Um, if you want your curves to render, you make sure to have that ticked um, as well with your points. Uh, you can see this little point there disappears and appears as I check it on and off, etc. Um, lighting scheme, scene lighting and black ambient color is the default but you can kind of cycle through here and see how this lighting changes you can set a custom lighting um, and you know define different uh, lights there um, that's the default and scene is what's usually there um, but if you want to change give it a different kind of uh, ambient color you can do that and you see how these change um, you know, I want to make it a bit darker so that, you know, I get some of those darker shadows, uh, you'll get that effect there. Um, so this, you know, is a different way of manipulating how things are seen, etc. Um, another useful thing to know is right now I have my show world access on, and so that's going to be this little, uh, widget there, um, so I can check it on and off and the different settings for how it looks, sorry, will be right here. You can define custom colors. So here, these are the colors that are set and you'll see those change there. But if you know you want a certain uh, look with that there, um, you can do that custom des um, define there. So application settings is just that gray color and you can also show the app world axes um, and then the grid as well if you want that effect to show um, and then the grid you can change uh, uh, sizing for the axes there etc so shut those off objects um, you can define in greater detail um, how you want certain objects to show for example curves you can make them a lot thicker if I go to six you can see those really thicken up um, which can save you time instead of uh, you know making that into a solid object um, points as well you can make them a lot bigger um, and so that round with white center it'll take on the color of the layer it's on um, you could also make it a solid color and you see that point there um, a square as well, etc. So those are helpful to know.
bring these back to a three. Um, and same for your point clouds surfaces as well. You can change um, what these, you know, if you have a naked edge or, um, uh, you know, edge for them, you can change that all here. And um, so that'll apply to surfaces. I don't think it's applying here because these are all uh, poly surfaces or extrusions and closed objects um, but it's pretty interesting um, things that you can play with and you'll see all of those effects uh, reflected on there and you can for the naked edges for example you can change um, and have them be different colors etc so that's all that good stuff is there let's go to use objects color um, shadows uh, so here you see those blue shadows that color is here um, you can change it to whatever you want if you want you know more of a glow etc um, i believe the default is usually black and that's what you're used to seeing um, but you can go at it there and um, you can change some of these settings and see what they do um, just keep in mind some of these things will affect your uh, speed of rendering um, and this here will affect um, can affect whether they show up or not based off of your camera clipping bubble um, so that'll be something else um, and then more settings here um, that you can get in and play with but that's how you kind of manipulate those uh, represented um, settings and just for reference this is your regular rendered settings um, and here you can see really how you can manipulate what those look like um, and so you just animate record your animation um, I think it's going to be this uh, circle animation that I had um, this is a fine this this path let's change it there should be fine and then enter and it'll record